Welcome, oh. folks, to another video. Hello. Another vidya on the Whiskey and Whitetails YouTube channel. I am Gus. I'm Matt. And together, growing it out, we can save the world with our powers combined. Yes. Captain Planet, he's a hero. No? Nobody? Okay. I've never seen that show. You're bullshit. <laughs> do, do, do not do that to me. What are we drinking today before we get into this nerdy nerdy uh, topic for today? Nerdy B-Lands. That, um, it's not bad. Sorry. You know, it's Blands. I don't know. It's a cool bottle. It's getting, it's getting low. Is this the apostrophe? Yep. Ooh. Oh, awesome. They're hard to find. Oh, it still smells right. That's, okay. Sorry. That's fine. My bad. Who's the store pick from? I did, I missed it. Burris. Burris. The guy downtown. Yeah. He's, uh, I haven't asked not to come back to that store. Oh, you were? Yeah. Why? Because he had Pappy in there for. Oh, that's where that happened. So what we came to talk about today was not gripe about secondary because we could do another whole video for that. We yep. came to nerd out a little bit on some science. We've done. Science. Science. Science rules. We did a, we did a video and we've touched on scent control as does everybody else. You know, this time of year, it's an important part of your uh your whitetail hunting strategy but why like what how do deer smell how does their brain work that makes it such an important part of their biology and something that we should consider so right. importantly so did a little reading not a scientist uh, but there's other people who are and have done a lot of the hard work already so i summarized some of it and thought it would be interesting to present to our listeners who may be thinking why do i need the ozone box why should I worry so much about my now? If you, as we've said in, in other videos, if you're if you're smoking deer from 250 yards away with uh, yeah, it may not matter. It, this probably may not matter. Yeah. But if you're bow hunting or doing or hunting in, in smaller distances with it, a man's bow, a stick and string, yeah, slingshot, not a a rock from a tree, not a <laughs> not a raven crossbow, uh, womp womp. spear hunting, <clears throat> spear hunting deer, spear hunting, yeah. Anyway, so we'll start off with like what actually is scent, uh, and researchers basically refer to it as volatile organic compounds, right? And we learned a little bit about this as when we were doing a deeper dive on some whiskey stuff, is that when you smell caramel or butter or whatever else, that's not what you're actually smelling. What you're smelling is the organic compounds that right. emit those scents, and we have in our brains attached to that thing. So the reason you smell banana sometimes in a certain, uh, like a scotch or a, sometimes an Irish whiskey, or I get it in Old Forester 1920, like a banana bread. Right. That same chemical compound presented itself in the aging process of the whiskey. That's that's what you're getting yeah. is those volatile organic compounds or VOCs. Um, and because they have a high vapor pressure is what it says, large numbers of those molecules disperse they get to our noses into our olfactory system and that's what we what we smell well our the human body gives off thousands of yeah. vocs way more than any whiskey or yeah, way, way, yeah way more than any whiskey <laughs> or banana right and so basically they they broke it down uh, and said that in the human body presents more than 1800 individual distinct vocs and these come from our breath skin and hair uh, urine Saliva, uh, milk. Do you have milk? Uh, <laughs> I have nipples, Greg. Can you milk me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, blood, everything. It, it's They all have individual uh, the, the, these you know, volatile organic compounds. And each of those is something, a scent that a whitetail can pick up if, it, if we're presenting or we're emitting that scent. Now, the scent molecule when it reaches a, a whitetail's nose, right? They have these, you've noticed they have, you know, big old nose holes, they'll lick. Breathing the, up all the hunter's air. Right, they'll lick up the, uh, <laughs> they'll lick their nose to uh, to attract more of those mo molecules to, to attach their nose. So if you ever, if you ever downwind and you, you see a deer putting their nose up and they're they're licking, they're, they're yeah. trying to get more of whatever they're getting because they're not sure what it is. They also do the, that lip curl for the same reason, mm -hmm. like uh, cats and dogs do it as well. They open their mouth to get a better scent. Yeah, the same reason, yeah. when, like when we yep. nose whiskey, you open your mouth a little bit. That that whole your nose and your mouth, that whole olfactory system works together to right. give you. Um, Just animals know to do it automatically. Humans, you have to tell them. Right, and then exactly. they're like, "Wow, that really does something." Like, <laughs> never been around an animal before, huh? Right. 
So once it's captured in the, what's called the cilia, the little hairs in the in the nose, uh, it gets dissolved, and then it, it through the mucous membrane in the nose, it gets transferred to the olfactory uh, epithelium. Now, the epithelium is basically the makeup of all these olfactory receptors that take that those molecules and pr process it. Right. So they break down those scents and create it creates signals that are sent to the brain through these electric currents or whatever you want to call them uh, to the olfactory bulb both animals white tails and humans have this olfactory bulb in their brain yeah, they also both of us also have that epithelium the difference humans uh, epithelium has five million of these receptors whereas a white tail has 297 million so they can smell a little bit better they smell a little bit better, uh, <laughs> and their olfactory bulb is four times larger than that of a human. So not only can they smell more, but they have more of their kind of brain power center of their dedicated to remembering sense. So where it what it really boils down to is deer have a greater capacity to both detect and transmit those scent signals. The olfactory bulb will then shoot those electrical impulses uh, up the olfactory nerve into the limbic system of the brain for analysis. So what the deer's brain does with the perception of the scent is it depends, basically it depends on what the the interaction is, but it will remember things basically and associate smells with experiences at the end of the day. Same thing that we do. But they remember for a lot longer. Yes. In the, the human world, it's referred to as the Proust phenomenon. But basically what it does is it's, it's the linking of a smell and or a scent with an experience. So if you present your sense and you're not managing your scent well and a deer experiences a near death sort of situation or they felt danger or they saw you or they saw you <laughs> or what any a number of those things and they associate that their brain subconsciously associates that smell with that danger. When you hear people say that, for instance, a nine year old deer is a different animal altogether than your typical yeah. whitetail. They're not entirely wrong. Sure, it's a whitetail species wise, but that deer and its catalog of experiences and smells, there's a reason that deer is nine years old. Yeah. He's and associated it survived that long. Everything. Because it has experienced a ton of stuff and it's figured out, you know, it may not live much of a life outside of its bedding area and, you know, the, the few areas that it's found safety, but it's allowed it to live well yeah. beyond the average whitetail lifespan. So those things basically what you know all that being said all those little details about the vocs and the the amygdala and the brain the the white tail's brain and the olfactory system it boils down to what you said earlier deer smell way better than we do and their brain subconsciously has more capacity to store those associations and those smells or scents with experiences that it helps them survive now if you're a biologist or white tail biologist and i got all that wrong Please let us know, and maybe you can come be a guest. We'd love to have you on the show. I think you're pretty spot on. It's um, uh, especially talking about the catalog of smells, because I mean, anyone that's hunted whitetail just knows that that's that. The older the deer, the harder they are to kill. I yes. have something in my eyeball. Yeah, you've been messing with it. It's, maybe it's your finger. Oh, could be. It hurts. <laughs> so, it, anyways, I, I I came across this this kind of breakdown of scent and what it is, and and what you know, someone basically explaining. Yes, we talk a lot about scent control, but there's a reason for it. It's yeah. not just because deer smell good. There's they it can screw it up goes your hunt. beyond that. Yeah. And 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 you can really screw up hunts for a long time yeah. by not controlling your scent well or by having hunting in an area that's highly pressured with other people not hunting. So that's a, an additional challenge. Well, like everybody knows the like opening day is the day to be out there because it's they've kind of had yeah. time to forget. Yeah. But then after opening day, I mean it's yeah, they're on high alert until kind of the rut comes in. Yeah, I post, I, I commented on a post today, and I can't remember what platform it was on, but the guy showed a trail trail cam picture of himself raking a path to get to his to his stand, and it was the day after opening day, and he was getting crap from people, and he was like, my work schedule and what what I had going on dictated that this was the first time I could get out to do this. Yes, it was opening day yesterday. I'm out here. I'm sweating. I'm stinking. But guess what? I left 14 hours later. I saw deer on the camera because I hadn't been out here all, you know, all, all, all summer. Uh, this is my first time out here. I haven't pressured the deer. 
and educated the deer. So you can get out there and you can do that as yeah. long as you're not overdoing it, basically. Right. Uh, and we've done the same thing. You know, you and I have crazy work schedules between between this and other stuff. And so sometimes I think actually the first time I'm going to have an opportunity to get out to my deer stands is going to be in a couple of weeks. Compare since we did preseason stuff in the summer. Yeah. I've still not had an opportunity to be out there. We've hunted in Kentucky. But I haven't hunted our property here in South Carolina. It's also we did opening day. We well, didn't we go did, to your stand. I didn't go to my stand though. Yeah. No, I, I'm really like I will hunt club stands um, and share you know, shared club stands until the weather cools off. Yeah, just because I prefer not to go to my I stands too to often. My stand. I need to get out there and pull pull cards and pull cards and put some corn. Put some corn out. Uh, salt lick. Yeah. Anyways, so yeah, that's what we were uh, just. I thought was interesting. I thought maybe you would find it interesting. So, anyways, um, that was that. VOCs and noses and olfactory system. Check it out. It's important for whiskey and deer. It is. Do you have things? Do you have? Do you ever have a smell that immediately brings you to a place or a, or a, a experience? Every time, like every time you smell, it, you're like, oh, boom, yeah, that for sure. I was I was very nose centric until I got the COVIDs and it kind of yeah. I don't know what it did. Like, there's still a lot of things I can't smell. Yeah, but typically they're bad things. So I'm glad I got COVID. Yeah, I guess that's good. <laughs> <laughs> like, I can't smell this the paper mill. Or, can't smell that at all. Nope, oh, I haven't nice. smelled it in months. Nice. Can't smell like really bad bathrooms. Like I've been in the people are like, oof, don't go in there. And I've been in there and they're like, don't smell anything. Yeah, it's fine. And they're like, really, it really stinks in there. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's my brand. I like yeah, it. Not bad. <laughs> but uh, what about you? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. My mom can cook things or my wife can cook things uh, or bake things and it can take me back to very specific like events, holidays, yeah. times. It's just something about, you know, being, coming from a, a family cultures rooted in you know, Cajun, Cajun. Cajun influences <laughs> and then yeah. from my mom's side, the Italian stuff, both of those are huge on family and cooking, you know, family gatherings being involved around cooking. So, yeah. I can I can smell something and sometimes it'll bring it back to something I haven't thought of in 20 years. But it just it's as if it happened yesterday. It's yeah, it's, cool. a, uh, it's like a path. That's that's when when you mention like the how the way the deer work. It's like they smell something and it could be months later they forget. It could be years later they still remember and they're like, oh, uh that's a brute, you know, cologne. Yeah. And then there's a hunter <laughs> here and he killed my buddy. So, yep. you know, for sure. Yeah. So it's um it's interesting. It's fun to it's fun to think about how our brains work and all the things that we do subconsciously. So much of the, our interactions and our actions, the way we do things, the way we react to things, are all subconscious. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and so, anyways, I am signing up for the uh, National Deer Association's Deer Steward Level One program, and they go into a bunch of uh, whitetail biology and uh, environmental stuff for managing a property for whitetails. I guess so I'm going to present for- that week by week on Patreon, and so you could basically get these classes for free. That was the idea: was to give not the whole class, but I'm going to I will yeah. I will do some some short sort of summaries of kind of what what I've learned. That way, folks, if they're interested, they like what they're hearing, they can go do the full thing for themselves and and enjoy. I'm looking forward to it. So yeah, I think it'll be fun. Anyways, I don't know where you're going to have time for that, but I don't either. Yeah, but just like everything else, I'll figure it out. Make time. Cool. Thanks for joining. That was our video on scent that Gus prepared, and he's going to hook you up with more whitetail stuff as time goes on. And if you want to be clicking that bell button so you know when it shows up, that'd be cool for you. Yeah. Throw us some likes. Yeah. You know, I'm going to be I'm gonna be real, real needy right now, Matt. Do it. We haven't done it in a few episodes, so. We need you to subscribe if you like this. There's more to come. We need you to let us know what you want. And you can have even more say in getting what you want by heading over to Patreon and joining for as little as three dollars a month. That helps us continue to make content for you. So subscribe, hit the like button, hit the notification bell, hit us up on the other social media uh, platforms. We're on all of them, pretty much. And the thing about Patreon too, we got asked last night by a new patron. He mm-hmm. asked before he bought which tier would help us the most. Like none of them do. It's it takes a lot of people for any yeah. of them to help us these are all helping you yeah at the end of the day the, all the tiers right now are benefiting you 100 percent because the things we're providing and doing you know some of them involve some costs and so yeah like i just got an email right here of home this is live folks this is live so right here i just ordered 
six, seven, eight, nine, fourteen t-shirts. Um, and he just sent me the total, and it's all more than twenty dollars a person. But if you join at ten dollars a person, after three months you get a shirt. If you join at t- twenty, get the same thing. If you join at eighty, right. we only have like two spots left at eighty. You you get a, you get some cool stuff yeah. at eighty dollars a month. You <laughs> it really, is. If there's any tier that I could recommend folks jump on, it would be that one. And it's not because it's eighty dollars a month. It's because what you get what you get for eighty dollars yeah. a month. If this wasn't our own Patreon, I'd probably sign up for it. Yeah. So this month's the eighty dollars this month. The actual thing you're getting is was sixty five something, and it's going to be over fifteen dollars a ship. So this month we actually lost, lost money, money. Yeah. on the eighty dollars. And tier. we're willing to do that because we yeah. want to continue to provide you guys with awesome stuff and have folks happy with what they're receiving so yep check it out give us a shoot us a dm if you got any questions leave us a comment with what you're wanting to hear or see or learn about and we'll be happy to make that happen until next time drink responsibly or something hunt safely i've never said know. that before well i, I did cheers it's the last time i ever say it. drink however you want mm-hmm.